Okay, y'all, good morning. We are out here in the zinnias, and I wanted to show you something. Now, remember when we were overrun with the beetle bugs? I want you to look at that. See those right there? And that. And all those down there. Those are dead beetle bugs. The Japanese beetles. Now what we had to do, they were coming on so strong that we had no choice but to use the seven dust out here. And I know it may affect the garden a little bit because of the pollinators. However, everything out there we can self-pollinate. See, it's really working. Like out here, we can shake those and they are self pollinating if you give them a good shake. Now, one thing I have noticed is with all this extreme heat, not as many, we're not getting many, as many tomatoes, but that's okay. We're getting some on the top, but shake them good. That's not gonna hurt the plants. In fact, it's good for them. Hey y'all, I wanna show you something. Look close at these plants. Those are all Japanese beetles and they have destroyed the top of our green beans. Now, as far as the garlic goes, they are drying well. Look how dead these leaves are and dry. But James took a scrub brush and he got all that dirt off these roots and away from the bulb. Now he didn't scrub the bulb itself, just underneath. And that's gonna help that dry without the chance of mold growing. Look how clean that is. Good job, James. My goodness, I, I love this walk down Rose Lane. Now we also had to dust the rose bushes with the seven dust and all these up here, these are our blackberries because Oh, I tell you, those Japanese beetles were just tearing up. So we lightly, lightly sprinkled those. Oh, if you could only smell these roses. Look here. So pretty. <clears throat> that was, is about a perfect rose. It was yellow, yellow. Now they're orangey yellow. <laughs> yes, I mean, they are beautiful. Yeah, that decided to change color on this. Yes, it did. It's turning pink now. Yep. Hey, Bubbles, I know you're watching the video. Look what he over here. Papa's got something to show you. I got a watermelon. Oh boy, Papa's growing you a watermelon. And there are more. Oh yeah, here's one. There's one, and there's one. Mm. Uh, well. Up oh, there's one. I was wondering in the back. One above your head. Small one, but. Where at? <laughs> right above your head. 
<laughs> right there. I got one there. I'm not sure if I'm catching it or not. But look here what we've got growing. These are more um, birdhouse gourds. And you know, I don't know why, but yesterday I kept calling them a squash and they're not a squash. But look how nice and big this one's getting. The watermelon. Like I said, those are sugar babies. And the potatoes are dying. Yes, our potatoes over here are dying. And like I said, probably in a few days or so, we'll be digging those up. See what we got. few more days on those. And this birdhouse gourd over here, the real tall one, it has decided to go ahead and run the ground, which we're perfectly happy with that. What you doing over there, Mr. James? Looking for dinner. Looking for dinner? Now this is what we keep out here to put these squash bugs, or the um, Japanese beetles in. We just pick them off and put them in that jug. And then we dump them out right there after they're dead. And that will detour more bugs from coming around. No dinner. Oh my goodness. Mm. I think tomatoes are my favorite thing to grow. And there's our echinacea. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I don't know if I'm gonna harvest any of that this year to make a tincture. Maybe we'll see in a month or so how much we've got. Because I don't want to disturb the plant if it's gonna, if it's not big enough to provide what we need, plus uh, keep the plant alive. So we will just wait on that. Yeah, we've got bees just full of pollen. Can you see that? He got more pollen than he is bee. Yeah, <laughs> that is really cool. And here, and here we found a cucumber that we did not see yesterday. But by keeping these watered twice a day, they're growing pretty good. They're not suffering at all. See, I've been watching that one. Never even seen this one. And that one, they're getting big quick. And we yeah. ended up harvesting four from the back garden behind the tomatoes yesterday. A couple of days there's gonna be some more, so. And then Mr. Gordhead, as I call him. We've got more over here. Where is your Mr. Gordhead? I call him Mr. Gordhead. Oh my <laughs> goodness, y'all. That Never is greater. growing by leaps and bounds every day. So what do you think about growing these birdhouse gourds? Well, that's fine, but we gotta figure out a different way to different place to grow them next year well it is getting awful tight in this corner <laughs> yeah well our first year growing it there is always something to learn when you first grow something for the first time but you can see the ones over there growing so so i think what we will do we've got them growing in one two three four different spots so I think the best thing to do is pick a spot, like maybe not in the garden where we want to grow food because birdhouse gourds are not food. Um, I think we can take this whole area up in here and plant not only the birdhouse gourds, but the apple gourds because there's plenty of space out here. They're in the other bed. We've got a lot of tomatoes bunching up. 
lucky bear. Now, yesterday after James and I watered, because we're kind of in a drought right now, um, we probably spent two hours, if not a little bit longer, killing squash bugs. And what you do is you water everything really well, and them squash, squash bugs will come up on the plant to the point where you can see them. And that's what we do. We water and then we spend a couple hours doing the squash bugs. Now there's some squash leaves down under here that I will be trimming off later today, probably this evening when it cools down. So, now we have a beautiful zucchini flower there. And what I did was took one of the nails and plucked it off and then fold it back. And then you take the nail and you get up in there. Can you see what I'm doing? And you self-pollinate. That will ensure that you get a zucchini every single time. Now we will be harvesting that pepper today. And I think there might be a couple more. And the jalapenos are getting nice and big. Ideally, we should have planted this on a arched cattle panel, but this is the only thing we had left. Here's a quick shot of my mama's rose. It's doing wonderful. Now here with the Cosmos, this year we put stakes in the ground beside where they're growing. And what we're going to do, we're going to tie those as they grow to the stakes. And that'll be all of them. That way, they're not going to take over the whole walkway like they did last year. Remember, this whole walkway was completely taken over to where we couldn't even get to the other side. So this year, we're just going to tie them up, keep them under control. Just a little bee. That's a pretty orange. All right, y'all. Well... That's gonna about do it. Man, look at all those peppers on there. Definitely gonna have enough to make my chili powder this year. All right, y'all. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope y'all have a blessed day day. And don't forget, if you're not subscribed, come on over and subscribe. We're good people.